It is important for banana growers in the wet tropics to implement environmentally sustainable practices to protect the environment that surrounds them and ensure the future of farming in the area. Fertigation is the process of applying fertiliser through the irrigation system. It allows growers to apply smaller amounts of fertiliser more regularly and tailor the supply of nutrients to the plant requirements. Applying smaller amounts of fertiliser more frequently reduces the risk of runoff and leaching. Fertigation can also reduce the total amount of fertiliser applied. This will maximise production, save money and benefit the surrounding environment. It will also reduce the amount of traffic within the paddock, helping to maintain good grassed interrows. Checking the efficiencies in the pumping of water is the first step. Without an efficient pumping and delivery system, fertigation cannot be efficient. Pat Daly from Daly's Water Service has been working in the irrigation industry for over 40 years. He holds many irrigation qualifications and has been designing and testing systems for many years. He guides us through the fertigation testing procedure. Testing can begin when the system is up to operating pressure and the lines are all filled. The first step is to calculate the length of time the injection of fertiliser will take to get to the outermost part of the irrigation zone. This is required to establish the length of time the shift should run for to fertigate. Remember to allow time for the filters to flush and time for the water in of the fertiliser. Adding a dye or small amount of fertiliser can be used in measuring this time, often referred to as the transit time. Noting the time it takes for the coloured dye or fertiliser to get to the outermost area, whether it be for the sprinklers or the drippers. The dye will easily be seen. Alternately, an EC meter could be used to measure the electrical conductivity. The benefits of the electrical conductivity meter is that we could also use our catch cans, referred to earlier, to see what the distribution of the fertiliser is within the canopy area. The time it takes will vary depending on the size of the irrigation shift and how far from the injection point the shift is. The next step is to calculate the rate of fertiliser to be injected into the system. This will depend on the injection method. If you have an automated system with a meter, this will give you the rate. If not, you will need to calibrate the rate of the fertiliser by timing a known amount of fertiliser that is injected into the irrigation system. So the main two types of injection systems that are used is what we call a VAT or V-tank or a bulk tank. The V-tanks typically is a system where we add the fertiliser and it's got a water replacement. So it's mixed in the V-tank. The water replaces as it's been injected. The bulk tanks or pre-mixed tanks is injected proportionally to flow and this can be controlled by normal types of irrigation controllers have this function. When mixing fertilisers you should be aware of the saturation point in solution. This means the total amount of fertiliser that can be dissolved in one litre of water. This will also change if you use multiple types for example nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium in the one mix. Be aware that not all fertiliser and nutrients can be mixed in solution. Always check the compatibility of the mix with your fertiliser supplier before you start mixing. When you have everything else calculated, it is now time to calculate the rate to apply the required nutrients. You should already have recommendations from your agronomist on the amount of nutrient that is required by the banana plant. This should be calculated from paired soil and leaf tests as recommended in the banana best management practice. Be aware that once the total figure of 350 kgs of nitrogen per hectare per crop cycle and 80 kgs of phosphorus per hectare per crop cycle is exceeded, the amount of losses increases. 
depending on your system, you must decide when you want to fertigate. Do you fertigate every time you irrigate, once a week or once every two weeks? Any longer is not a good practice and should be avoided at all costs. Fertigation allows for the targeted, more frequent application of nutrients. Optimising fertiliser use by ensuring that fertigation and irrigation systems are operating efficiently reduces the amount of nutrient being lost to the environment. Thank you.